What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Kangaroo Black, coming back once again to talk my Alabama Crimson Tide. But before I start, I want to make a public apology to Pete Golden. Pete Golden, I am so sorry for every negative word I spoke about you. I am so sorry for speaking negative on your defensive play calling while you was at the University of Alabama coaching my Crimson Tide defense. I am so sorry. This is a sincere apology coming from Kangaroo Black. I am sorry. As I said, for every negative word I spoke on your name, Pete Golden. As I always tell other fans, be careful for what you wish for. And now I got to take my own advice. So Pete Golden, I hope you accept my sincere apology. <laughs> but anyway, let me get on into the video and talk about what I want to talk about. I was looking at uh, Bama Standard last night and they opened my eyes. They opened my eyes. Smoke Dixon, Stephen M. Smith from Touchdown, Alabama. Marvin Constant, a great Alabama linebacker. Corey Miller, the father of Christian Miller, another great Alabama linebacker. Corey Miller, he is also a South Carolina legend. So if you're a South Carolina fan, you know who Corey Miller is. But those guys opened my eyes last night as they was talking about my Alabama Crimson Tide. And they wasn't only talking about the defensive side of the ball. They also was talking about the offensive side of the ball. And I agree with every single thing those guys said. Every word that they uttered, man. Everything, man. But anyway, talking about the offensive side of the ball first, yes. <clears throat> we have two dynamic running backs, and we wasting them. We are wasting them. Jalen Miro, I believe, have 20 more carries than Jam Miller. Jalen Miro got, I think, 59 carries. Jam Miller got 39, I believe. I don't have it up no more, but yeah, he got 39. And it is a daggone shame. And I know Jalen Miro, some of his carries are from uh, making things happen, scramble yards. But I'm going to say, if, even if that was the case with 10 10 carries that scramble yards or, or plays not designed for the quarterback to run. If it's 10, he still got 10 more carries than Jam Miller. And here it is, Justice Haynes, Justice Haynes only have 31 carries on this season. Freaking, freaking uh uh Jalen Miro got down there 30 yard, 30 carries more than this than 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 Justice Haynes. That's a damn shame. Here it is. You got Nate Frazier at Georgia. He's got four less carries than Justice Haynes. A true freshman at Georgia got four less carries than Justice Haynes. And Nate Frazier at Georgia really haven't got any playing time since the, the game one of the season against Clemson. But yet, he only got four less carries than Justice Haynes. That's a damn shame. And we used to talk about how how uh, last year Tommy Reese wasn't using Jalen Miro in the right way. Well, guess what? Nick Sheridan, he's not using these running backs in the right way. Run the freaking ball. Run the ball. You call all of these daggone quarterback, design quarterback runs for, for, for Jalen Miro, but you leaving out. The running backs. It's the running backs' job. Now, Jalen Miro should just be an extension of the run game. That's what he should be. He shouldn't be getting 10 or 12 design runs per game when your running backs only getting five carries or six carries a game. That's crazy. That is crazy. But that's what we're doing on the offensive side of the ball when it comes to to the run game. Let those offensive linemen do their job and open up the holes for these daggone running backs. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. 
Then when it comes to the, 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 the passing game, basically we got two receivers. I'm going to say that, two. Ryan Williams and Jeremy Bernard. That is it. That is it. How many times before Kendrick Law went down did they actually go to Kendrick Law? How many times? How many times have they went to who? who let, let's, name, let's name another one. You got Kendrick Law. You got, uh, matter of fact, Kobe Prentice. They ain't using Kobe Prentice like they should. Man, I did I did my little uh, uh, preview and prediction video with, uh, with Texas and Oklahoma. You look at Texas, they got several receivers with multiple touchdowns, multiple catches. But us, Ryan Williams. Ryan Williams got what? Six receiving touchdowns. Everybody, nobody else with Alabama. No more than one. Ryan Williams got six. Cobra Princess got one. Kendrick Law got one. Jeremy Bernard got one. That's it. Ryan Williams got 324 more passing yards or receiving yards than the next wide receiver, and that's Jeremy Bernard with 220 receiving yards. You ain't using these guys. You ain't using these guys. Cobra Princess only got 100 and seven receiving yards. Eight receptions, 107 receiving yards. Eight. That's crazy. That is crazy. Now, just, just last week against Georgia, or week before last against Georgia, that, that's when you started using your tight ends. You should have been using them before last week. It seemed like you put everything into the first half against Georgia. But after that first half, your offense really ain't did nothing, you know, to gloat about. Yeah, they put up 35 points against Vandy, but shit, it's Vandy, and you're still lost. I mean, Jesus, you got the personnel. Use your daggone personnel. You got four and five stars all over the damn place. Use the guys. Use them. I mean, you got a you 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 say you playing true freshman anyway. You got a six five true freshman wide receiver sitting on the damn sideline in Caleb Odom. Come on, man! Every time this offense need a big play, you going you going to Ryan Williams. Everybody knows this. He just happened to make spectacular catches. You go you go to nobody else. We got receivers. Spread the damn ball around. We got running backs. Use the damn running backs. It all goes back to coaching. That's what is going back. That's what this, everything that goes wrong with Alabama, it, it goes back to coaching. And like they were saying, we were just, as fans, happy to be winning. We were just happy to be winning. But if you look at the offensive side of the ball, what happened against South Florida? What happened in the second half against Georgia? What happened against Vanderbilt? Just terrible coaching. Now, against South Florida, I can't say we, we had a couple of guys injured on the offensive line. But still, but still, you just got better athletes than, than South Florida. Put them in a position to succeed. That's all you got to do. Football. I always say it is checkers, not chess. It ain't something that you just got to sit there and just think, 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 think. Because when you do that, you overthink. You overthink. Come on now. You put, your, put your guys in a position to succeed. If you got to change your ways, as a coach, change your ways and adapt to the players. It's better for one person to adapt to 50 people than 50 people to adapt to one person. And could I be right? Could I be right? It's a damn shame. But anyway, you look at it 
the defensive side of the ball. Now, that's r really coaching. That is really coaching. Your scheme is not working in no way, shape, or form. And we can, again, go back to, matter of fact, yeah, you can go back to South Florida. You can go to Wisconsin. You can go to Georgia. Your scheme just don't work. That's all it is to it. It ain't working. Kane Wilmington was going to have to, he got to do something else. And he got to try something else other than this 425. I know you want to stick with the 425, but damn, can you mix them? Uh, uh, 335 in there? Can you mix them? Can you mix them 43 in there somewhere? That that damn, damn 425, whatever the hell it is, this shit ain't working. I'm just telling you that now. This shit ain't working. This bandits and wolves shit ain't working. Yeah, it was it was it was good talk. It's good to talk about in the offseason. Well, the shit ain't working. We done seen the results of it. Talking about it, being hyped about it coming into the season, I ain't giving the uh, the fans or the team the results that they was looking for. It is not. We got to get out of that shit. You 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 won't send pressure I ain't going to even say a quarter of the time. You just refuse. The only time Kane Womack really didn't sent pressure is in the first half against the Georgia Bulldogs. That's it. That's it. Defense can't get no penetration. Only time you do get something is the occasional time that you blitz and the linebacker just happen to get to the quarterback or happen to get the quarterback off his off his damn spot. That's that's when we get a, a, a interception or something like that. Incomplete passes. But other than that, you let this quarterback sit back there and pick your secondary apart. And with your secondary, it's not very good. That's what happens. That is what happens. You got to send pressure at these quarterbacks. You got to send those edge rushers. This, this, oh, Lord, have mercy. As a matter of fact, you're doing all this rotation in the secondary with cornerbacks and safety. Where's the rotation in the front seven with the with the defensive line and the linebacker? Where's the rotation in that area? Because I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. And then now you, you got Jaheim Otis, Jaheim Otis, red shirt, and planning in on the transfer portal. Because of lack of playing time. Yeah, he's been banged up, but damn. You just going to let him sit on the sidelines? Hell, uh, uh, Elijah Pritchett was banged up, but you put his ass in there against freaking, uh, freaking South Florida. And look what happened. Alabama went on to score 28 unanswered points in six minutes. So putting dag on Jaheim Otis can't hurt too much. Defense ain't doing shit in it damn way. Come on, man. Come on, man. Maurice Link was, I don't know what you're teaching these defensive backs. Man, this our defensive secondary ain't never looked this bad as I know of, but one game in the last 15, 16 years. And that was against Tennessee in 2022. When when Hendon Hooker and Dagon Jalen Hyatt was wearing their ass out. Other than that, Secondary been all right. Secondary been all, our defense was never this bad under Pete Golden. Even though we gave Pete Golden hell, our defense never looked this bad. As of right now, Alabama defense is ranked 11th in the SEC. 11th in the SEC. That ain't even in the in the top half. Sad. Sad. We are ranked 50th, the, the number 50th defense, 50, 50 in total defense in the country. Sad for our Alabama defense. Never was like this under Pete Golden. That's why I had to come and apologize to Pete damn Golden. Pete, Pete, shh. me, I would love to have Pete Golden back right now. Love it. That's why I say 
Be careful for what you wish for. The grass ain't always greener on the other side. And like those guys were saying last night on the Bama standard, according to everybody, Kane Womack was a home run hire. Uh, shit. That's a lie. That's a lie. And you know, I always get these guys some time. Give them some time. Shit. Not Kane Womack. Not Kane Womack. Not with this 4-2-5 defense. I am not. I gave him some time. From, from damn, what is it? Uh, uh, from the halftime of the Georgia game, you saw what happened in that second half. And you seen what happened the entire game against Vanderbilt. That's enough time for me. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Secondary, straight terrible. All right? So, hey, it is what it is. Then they talking about fit. Do these coaches fit with Alabama football? That's another question. Does Kalen DeBoer fit with Alabama? Now, we know Kalen DeBoer is a winner. He done won everywhere he done went. But at Alabama, is he a fit? Now, I am not going to give up on Kalen DeBoer. I think we need to give him this season, at least this season. I'm not going to give up on him. But he's going to have to get a little more tougher on these guys. And they got the, this culture. We already see a culture change. We've seen it in the offseason. Freaking music at practice, ice cream trucks at practice, everybody in front of the camera. And me, for one, I would say, hey, I like this change. The, the guys are buying into this. Well, guess what? Now you see the results of the music at practice, the ice cream trucks, the, everybody get to talk to the media. Everybody is friends now. And now you see the results. And you really seen it against Vanderbilt with Malachi Moore. You see it now. Even, even Jalen Miro dancing when you lose it. Who does that? It's sad to say that I have never seen my Alabama Crimson Tide act like this. I'm going to just tell you that right now. But I can't give up on my Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm not giving up on Coach Kalen DeBoer. But that damn Kane Womack, no faith whatsoever from KB. Pete Golden, we need you back. We need you back, Pete Golden. Kevin Steele, where you at? I need you. I need you. Greg Byrne, call one of those guys. Whatever you got to do to get Pete Golden back, get him back. If you need to bring Kevin Steele out of retirement, please give him the money that he want. I ain't. We, I think the offense, it can do what it need to do. It can get better. We can start using the running backs and putting the offensive guys in a position to succeed. But this damn Kane Womack just refused to do it. So, hey, it is what it is. I just want to get my little, my few thoughts out, and I'm done with it. Vanderbilt game is behind us now. Ain't no use to keep talking about it and dwelling on it. But I just can't get it out of my damn mind. So, and beating South Carolina this week, if we do, that still ain't convincing me. Not when it comes to Kane Womack. Because I'm sure he'll revert back, he'll revert back to the same shit. If he ever get away from it. So, hey, it is what it is. I just wanted to give y'all my thoughts. And uh, y'all remember to be blessed. And KB don't give a piss about nothing but the tide. And roll damn tide.